holding our pencil so lightly it just slides out of our hand. Paper that we can barely see is symmetry lines. We always put a line of symmetry through the middle. Yes. So that we can have a reference, a form of reference here. So line of symmetry down the middle. Further, we have to decide is this a good circle or is it a lumpy potato? If I look at mine, I notice that mine's a little bit too wide over here. So I'm going to revise it a little bit. I'm going to bring my lines over. I'm going to go a little bit harder with my lines so you can. Your lines should uh, start to show up a little bit better now because now you're kind of revising. So I'm keeping my, my drawing light and loose and I'm just going back and forth. I'm kind of like an airplane. I kind of like, I float around and then I land and I commit to certain lines that I like to keep. So I just keep it as loose as possible. So now that I like my drawing right here, we're going to commit to it. So instead of holding my pencil lightly back here, when we decide to commit after we have revised, I hold my pencil up towards the lead, a little further up towards the lead. I hold on to it for dear life. Now I'm clamping down on it. You cannot steal my pencil. And I'm going to draw this uh, circle in two parts. I always draw big shapes in two parts. I start up here. Here we are. Do you guys ever go sledding at Horse Barn Hill? Yes. Yeah. So here we are, the horse, the king of Horse Barn Hill right here. And I've got my stocking hat on. Yay. And there is my stocking hat. And I'm going to slide down Horse Barn Hill. I go down one side of the hill. You can draw that. And I stop at the bottom, and I walk back up, and then I start on the other side. So you don't have to, well, you can draw a little figure if you want. So, and I'm still fairly messy. I haven't decided that this is a perfect circle, but you see how I'm forming that circle, little at a time. Lightly again, we're gonna put another line of symmetry across the middle. Um, we wanna keep this light and loose as possible. And this time we're going to put in two circles right next to each other. In fact, I'm going to have them intersect right on the line of symmetry. It's going to look uh, like a Venn diagram. You guys know what a Venn diagram is in English? Contrasts and similarities. So it's going to look like a Venn diagram. I have not committed to it. I'm keeping my lines, my shapes loose. And I do not commit to them. Just throwing a couple of these working lines in here and there so that I can kind of measure as I'm going. Now, I like the shape, so now I'm going to decide that I'm going to commit to it. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold my pencil for dear life, and I'm just going to commit to these vital lines right here. And this is going to uh, allow me to create complex shapes out of very simple shape. So see how I've got a kind of a bigger complex shape here. Now I like that. It looks pretty good. And without using an eraser, I'm going to just keep drawing. And this time I'm going to put two circles in the middle. Symmetry. Look at these working lines I put in. Um, I keep them light and loose so that you can't see them and we can get rid of them later, but that helps me to create symmetry in my drawing. I like these two shapes, so I'm going to move on to some other shapes. So we're going to move around the drawing and let's figure out like the shape of a nose and one of the advantages of drawing lightly is that you can you can draw so you can see it first and we got a square nose I don't really like it that much so I'm going to I'm going to rework that square and let's come up with maybe a small circle no that doesn't really look very good either so how about um, an oval and I do like that oval so I'm just going to uh, gonna work that in a little bit more and notice how I'm just skating around and I'm using my lines. I'm building up my, my values a little bit as I go. So we have a nice uh, kind of tone here. Now we move on to the next feature. And again, I'm not committing to these yet. I'm just going to skate around and I'm going to start to work out some of my lines. And so, Notice how I'm kind of designing, I'm not creating just a boring old smile, but I'm working these lines and I'm just uh, loosely kind of 
designing something that might be a little bit more energetic with my, my character here. And we'll put a little bottom lip on there. And I like these, so I'm ready to commit to these now. So I'm going to hold my, so notice how I'm always moving my pencil around. I'm going to commit to this drawing now. And I'm going to commit to the lines here. And I'll commit to this line. And, oh, there we go. Pressing too hard, I broke my pencil. But see how I can keep drawing uh, with that long pencil. I didn't have to stop. So we like to keep those pencils sharp. And notice how I'm always moving my pencil around so that it doesn't flatten out. Now, another thing is uh, I have these lines that are starting to get in the way. And I don't have any eraser left here. And that's usually the case for an artist is we lose our, never, we're never quite prepared. So I like to just teach drawing and, and have people just uh, draw with basic pencils that they can find anywhere because it, it doesn't create an obstacle in drawing for when you're really in the mood for drawing. So I'm going to uh, commit to these lines, but now I'm going to start to change my pe pencil position. If you hold your pencil in your non-drawing hand, and this is your drawing hand and you pretend you're a rocket launcher, um, you can put your pencil right here, your finger right here on the lead. And what that does is that allows us to quickly shade and we can create staircases and, and sharp angles. So I'm going to uh, use this and I'm going to just shade in and you can see how I can, I can really tone, I can really lay it down and then I can lighten up as I go and I can get a gradient shade this way. So you see how I can just shade and, and I can use my finger too. So I'll use my fingers to tone that shading in and you have a little oil on your fingers and so it, it helps to uh, kind of fix um, that shading in. And we'll try it again over here. We'll just go lightly and lightly over here and then will shade and, and sometimes if you throw in like a little bit of a I can uh, a little bit of a highlight there notice I'm going to bear down in the middle and lightly shade in the outside and we can get, get a sense of light and density into our shape and then I'll use my finger and we'll just kind of tone it in and that looks pretty good. So notice how it's just developing. I'm not finished and I'm moving on. I'm not really working uh, in too much detail in here yet. Now, this is the evil eraser, of course, so we need some angles. Angles should be drawn with just a, a snap of the wrist. So we just kind of like you pull lines quickly and then you can create an angle. If I go slow, I get these wavy lines. But if I go quickly, I can pull very sharp angles. So here we go. Oh, now it's a very scary evil eraser with sharp teeth. And notice how I'm pulling angles very quickly. Now these don't show up very well, so we can go back in with a little value and we can create some shading. And we'll work in some values this way. And then I like it, so I'll just work in some darker tones right in here and we're going to develop the shading of our evil eraser and there we go and I'll use my pencil fingers to just throw some shading in there and the other thing is notice how I have some scribbles going this way so I can go in different directions when I'm shading too so I, I'll shade this way, and I'll shade this way. And this is called cross-hatching, when we shade in one direction, and then we shade in the other direction against the grain. And I'll commit to these lines now, so, so notice how I'm using my pencil to reestablish line work. And I'm holding my pencil uh, tightly now, so that I'm recommitting to these lines. And so now we have a very evil eraser developing before our eyes. Very scary. Uh, now, how about some eyebrows? 
take our rocket ship grip, give it a real dark line for some evil eyebrows, and we like everything so far. But one thing is missing so far, so I'm going to switch to a pencil that actually has an eraser. And I'm just going to lift some highlights. So this is where we start to use our eraser. We want to lift some light out. And notice how I'm lifting light out next to a dark value here. So see how the dark value brings out the highlight right here. So we'll put in a highlight right here. And then we'll put in a highlight right here. And we'll give it so we can see that we can create some depth with our features here. And if we create some uh, dark values against a highlight, it creates a little bit more drama than what we had before. So we can see that, and I'll just add some loose shading right here on the nose. Let's just add a little bit of shading onto, uh, highlight onto this and we'll surround it with some dark values right here and give it a sense of depth. And the other thing with uh, shading is always shade in the direction of the form so that you get a sense of that it is round. And I'll do a cross hatching right here, develop that in. And then we'll do the same over here. We'll just develop these intensity of uh, values here and now you can just clean up your lines these light lines were something that we we kept light so we it's not a problem to uh, work those in and I'll I'll just go around and clean up the drawing and there we have it it's the very evil eraser